Hello, my friends. <laughs> yeah, here we are. As promised here, I am going to take a little look at my collection of the Thomas the Tank Engine books that I've owned ever since I was just a child, and even some that I've even collected well in modern day. Well, mostly by modern, I mean 2011, 2012, but we'll get to that at the very end. But yes, now... I am here to collect, show you a collection of these Thomas books. Yeah, you think that the Railway series was the only series of children's books out there? Well, think again. <laughs> yep, here we are with a collection of all these, you know, children's Thomas books. What you guys see here in this pile, this this is what I own. And just to let you know, I have an original, like, an old copy of, you know, the original, like, 26 books, you know, that... The Reverend Audrey published, but it's a pretty battered copy, as I was a kid back then. So, yeah, I'm not really going to show you that, but I'm letting you guys know that, yes, I do have the original, like, you know, 26, you know, the, the books that I, that series, that Railway Series Limited Edition Collection, I think that came out in 1998, I believe? Not exactly sure, but yeah, these were the Tomics books that I love. I mean, like these series of books that you'll see here. We'll get to them in a second. But right now, like, I'll let you in on, you know, some of the other Thomas books. Now, these were sold basically in your typical everyday, you know, drug stores, department stores, you know, um, book stores and such. And I even got some at book fairs. Yeah. Like... If you were a kid, you know, growing up through, you know, the 80s, the 90s, and even the early 2000s, I, I know they still sell children's books these days, but yeah, these, of course, you wouldn't see, you know, Thomas books, you know, like these, well, okay, maybe these, but these books, this is what made my childhood, and it's been years, like, I really haven't touched up on them now, but I've been thinking about them, and just like last year when I reviewed the, you know, the magazines that were from 2001, here I am with these early Thomas books that I used to read, that I loved reading during my childhood, and I was also very demanding for some that I would see on the shelves. But for now, without jibber-jabbering, let's just, you know, spend some time talking about it, and we'll go in chronological order. We'll go back early into the days, and here is one, it's a Railway Series book, yeah. And this is the very first Railway Series book when Christopher Audrey took over in 1983. And this is Really Useful Engines, yeah. Here is the back cover. I remember I got this when I was, I think, when I was in third grade, like, back in my local elementary school. Like, there were, you know, times where, you know, kids would give away, like, different, like, books and such, like, trading them off, and I just so happened when I was looking, and also, because back then I didn't want people to know I loved Thomas the Tank Engine, so I saw this when all the books were getting traded, this Railway Series book, and I just felt I just had to get this, and I did. It's the Railway Series book, Really Useful Engines, and as I was saying, this was the very first book that Christopher Audrey like, published, you know, when he first took over, you know, after his father stepped down from writing, and like I said, this was 83, and here, I'll just read it to you. Dear friends, I am happy to say that Thomas and his friends are still at work, trying as hard as ever to prove themselves. Really useful engines, I am happy to say so. Oh, no, that's not what it says. I'm happy to say that my father is still taking a keen interest in the region's affairs, and it is with grateful thanks that I would like to dedicate this book to him, the person who began it all. Yeah, that's really nice to hear. Because, well, this is Christopher Audrey. Yeah, it contains the stories Stop Thief. You guys already know these stories. I'm not going to get into them. Yeah, it, it, it contains the stories. But I'll just, you know, show you through the pages just to show you what they look like. Might even split this into two parts if I have to. So, yeah, the stories are Stop Thief, Mind That Bike, Fish, and, oh yeah, Triple Header. And, as you guys already know, um, this book is mostly about the three tank engines. Yeah, I'm surprised that he dedicated it to the three main tank engines that we've known throughout the Railway Series stories. Thomas, Percy, and Duck. 
and only two stories from this book would be adapted onto TV, which is Mind That Bike and Fish in Season 4, though they change things up in that, are, as you guys already know. <laughs> so, yeah. We got this one out of the way, so now we'll get to the books that I mostly read when I was just a kid. Alright, but now these were the kind of books that you would see in, you know, your local drug stores, you know, bookstores, um, department stores, even toy stores, you name it. Hell, I have plenty of these books, and some they are in my basement, but I don't have them, but I guess I could show them some other time. But yes, here we are with this. This is a book, Thomas Gets Tricked in Other Stories, or as you guys know, Thomas and Gordon, and it even says here, based on the railway series by the Reverend, though this was way back in 1989, as you can see here, back when, you know, the show first, you know, came on Shining Time Station. Say what you will about that, but I've really lost interest in Shining Time. I mean, I don't have the same mindset I had from when I first saw it back in 2011. So, yeah. But yes, as you can see, this is a pretty old copy. There's plenty of creases and such. It's pretty beaten up. And this tag here is pretty faded. Now, this was one of those, you know, very few picture books by the company, um... Oh, crap, it's, uh... It's, well, like, it's in the way, but I'll just say it. It's called Please Read to Me, as you can see. It's, you know, this little logo with the two little cute little bunnies. <laughs> You know, just looking at a book. It was a picture book company. I haven't really done research on them. But hey, you know what? Seeing that I, you know, have the right to just, you know, pause the damn thing. I'll just get to it right now and just, you know, let you know what I've looked up. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, I wasn't... Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that exactly. Yeah, but it was a picture book company. I don't know if they're still in business or not, but they publish many books. And it's not just Thomas the Tank Engine. It, they also have others from Sesame Street to Berenstain Bears. Oh, and just for the record, yes, I have grown up with Stain, not Steen. Yeah, I gotta be honest with you guys. I really do not believe in that whole Mandela effect that I've heard about. You know, especially after, you know, watching that really fricky as hell, like, you know, angry video game nerd episode when, you know, he did that review on the Berenstain Bears games. <laughs> Okay, so, yeah, that aside, this book, uh, yeah, I wrote this too, this book belongs to me, um, as you can see with the bunnies, it was a picture book company, and they did Thomas the Tank Engine, and I'll get to in a few others, you know, when I, when I get to the other books, but yeah, um, it's nothing really that major to say, except it's just the frickin' story, you know, from the, from both the books and even the TV series, just, you know, word for word and such, mostly from the U.S. dub. And, well, with, I gotta say, very, very rare pictures. Yeah, like some of the pictures that you wouldn't see in the show, but they also really didn't get it right where some of the pictures, well, they don't have, you know, they aren't exactly in the episode. Like this one you see here, this was down the mine, not Thomas and Gordon. Yeah, so, I don't, no need to read it. It's pretty much the same story, you know, word for word. You pretty much get it. Just, but on the bright side, these pictures that they have included in the book, they're very rare. Yeah, so it's not just Thomas and Gordon. They even, they skipped the Edward and Gordon story. And now we have, the rest of it is just, um, oh yeah, it's up to Thomas, excuse me. Up to Thomas's train. We have Henry's story arc. We have, you know, the sad story of Henry. Yeah, I, I mean, just to make sure, I'll make sure you guys get the chance to see the rare pictures in the book. Yeah, it's just... And I really love them, especially since this was back in the days of the model series. So yeah, we got the sad story of Henry, Edward Gordon and Henry, and look, even though they don't have the story after Thomas and Gordon, we have Edward and Gordon, yet that story's not even in it, but we got the picture. Yeah, this was pretty common. Like, they had plenty of the rare pictures. Um, I can't exactly remember. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've watched the actual episode. So, yeah, they really, like, were fooling around with these and such. I mean, they could have at least tried to get some right. I mean, like, why would Gordon be pulling trucks when he was just pulling the Express? <laughs> 
but yeah, it's all pretty impressive. Um, and the last one is Thomas's train. Yeah, they only skipped a few stories, but only got up to this. Yeah, there. This was mostly with what happened when we had the you know. This was only for the first two seasons. They had you know the pictures from the actual like model series. That was it. Heck, they even have some pictures from season two. Surprisingly. <laughs> And we didn't even get to that season yet. So, yeah, it's the same book, word for word. And here are the other books that you would get. Um, yeah, some holiday books, some Sesame Street. All right. Yeah, they also had a season two. I, I do have the other book. Um, I remember it's Pop Goes the Diesel, but I'm not really able to get to it at the moment. But I do have it, and the stories I do remember fondly, too. And, yeah, each book did, like, so far, each book, like, came with four stories, and the one, which is the Pop Goes the Diesel one, has the famous Duck and Diesel trilogy. And the last one being Wooly Bear. Yeah, I wish I had it with me right now. Another was an alphabet book. And unfortunately, I'm not able to get to that too. It's in the basement and it is in storage. But yeah, this one, while it is in a beat condition, everything else, it's alright. Just a few creases every now and again. We'll get to this one right now. It's a Thomas and the Magic Railroad book. Um, Diesel 10 means trouble. Say what you will about the movie, yeah, it's still bad. But on the bright side, like, one of the best things I liked about it was the villain, Diesel 10, who was easily my favorite character in that. In fact, this book, Thomas and the Magic Railroad, well, sorry, well, no, I mean Diesel 10 meets trouble, which was one of the very few books at the time that was, well, based off the movie... Um, this actually had ideas from the director's cut. Yeah, mostly about Diesel 10. Here, I'll go through it right now. So, yeah, it's lucky that this book is in pretty good condition, at least, despite for a bad movie. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not a big fan of the colors, but the illustration is actually pretty nice. So, yeah, um, like, I'll just show you the pages. I'm not gonna, you know, spend time, like, reading through it. Yeah, we have Mr. Conductor right here, even though I really think that it's just the problem, the other problem. I mean, this felt more like Shining Time Station. Like, and honestly, I think Thomas would have been a lot better on its own. Look, I know there was, you know, problem, you know, with the timing and such and program blocks, but hey, they could have done what they're doing with Thomas on PBS right now. Just, you know, the double show or, and having even some segments in the middle. I don't have any idea why Britt Allcroft didn't even think of that. And here's Gordon, and the idea of, like, Diesel 10, like... Like, and it's odd, though, that Thomas feels frightened, even though he actually, you know, is pissed off at Diesel 10 more. And he wanted to run the rail... It's railway! <sighs> yeah, damn Americanism. I'm pretty impressed with the pictures, and oh, would you look at that! Even just like the Bachman model, they even got you know the red spot under James's smoke box here. Sorry, James's smoke box here too. Yeah, and Henry and Gordon's funnels are pretty tall. So yeah, here's the idea that they have, like that wasn't in the movie. Like Diesel Ten was a regular engine that was hired to help the Fat Controller, and the reason he got his name is Ten out of Ten. Ten for being just a total asshole. And, excuse me, it's it's just going to be a little difficult, you know, just getting, you know, in a good position right now. So, yeah, he was a normal engine hired to help the Fat Controller while he was away. But his real intentions, as we all know, will be explained later. And the reason why you don't see his claw, Penchy, is, well, because he's hidden it. Like, there is, like, sorry. Yeah, sorry if I'm a little garbled right now. So, yeah, like, he's explaining his real intentions to Splatter and Dodge. And once he do, and once he does, this was the idea from the movie. A hatch opens up on his roof, and out comes Pinchy. I really have no idea how Pinchy would be able to, you know, hide in there. And, yeah, hell, I can, I mean, while over the top it is, because, yeah, it's really over the top. Like, how is it that Pinchy is able to, you know sit, like, how is he able to fit in there, like, he'd rather be on the roof, 
Like, because there's no way Diesel 10 could really hide it inside of him. Not, not the only thing. Another, th excuse me, another thing I'm wondering, like, how can Diesel 10 even control it? Like, yeah, the engines need their drivers, but wouldn't there have to be, like, another driver in space, like, some cockpit, like, controlling Pinchy? Like, it's what? Like, Pinchy controlled by, like, say, telekinesis or something? Like, Diesel 10 can just control Pin... Pinchy, like, with his brain waves or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, here are the rest of this. Enough, like, uh, 15 minutes going away. We're gonna have to split this into parts after all. Here are more pages. Um, and other... Oh, I skipped a page. Rare illustrations that you saw in the 2000s. Hell, this wasn't the only book I had based off the movie. Um, there was another one, which was Little Engines Can Do Big Things. I don't know if I have it, but... That book actually used the early 2000s promo pictures. You know, those those pictures that the Bachman Thomas models were poorly made from the early... You get the idea. So yeah, it's the same, you know, scenes from the actual movie. Yeah, oh, and I really like this illustration right here with Diesel 10 falling off the viaduct. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, there was another one I had. Um... Yeah, there's something else I might as well mention before I get to the next few books. I even had a few of the coloring books from when I was a kid. I don't know if they're still in storage, but yeah. I remember I got them from a day out with Thomas and Friends event, which I think was either in 2000 or 2001. Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure it was 2000 as they had the coloring books of Thomas and the Magic Railroad while the movie was still out, and... As bad as that movie was, like, I do remember myself enjoying them, well, mostly when I was a kid, as this was before, you know, I grew up and realized how crappy it was. Okay, we're getting off topic, but yeah, like, there were a few coloring books, and, and heck, there was even another Thomas and the Magic Railroad book. It was one of those big, you know, flat, you know, books with, um, pictures and such, and yeah, I don't really have it with me right now. But I do remember some of them actually had, you know, ideas, you know, from the director's cut that, of course, the bloody soccer moms and the test audience wouldn't allow in the movie. But if you guys want to know what I'm really talking about, watch, you know, the Forgotten Media series. Like, watch Melting Man 234's Forgotten Media. Like, he talks about Thomas and the Magic Railroad and the director's cut. And he even stated, like, you know, some of the, you know, ideas that I already mentioned with the director's cut ideas being in the books, you know, since they never really made it into the film. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> if you really want to, like, know what I'm talking about, go find his video. Just, like, you know, type Forgotten Media, Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Y you'll see it. All right, so without all jibber-jabbering and such, we'll get to the rest of them. Um, here's this one, Thomas's Railway Word Book. It's nothing too big. All it is really is just... It's a word book, yeah. Like, logs, coupling hook, yeah. <laughs> it's just a word book, really. Just one of those word books, you know, where they're just pointing, you know, to certain objects and just saying the word and just teaching children about words and such, yeah. Um, <laughs> James is... And it's got, you know, some other, you know, pretty obvious things. Like, James holds coal in a special bin called a tender. He uses his whistle to talk to a bird. Good to know. Yeah, here's Gordon. <laughs> yeah, so there's some other obvious stuff. And here's Henry, yeah. <laughs> You're lifting Henry even with his tender on. Uh, then again, it's a children's book. And look, the sheep are eating some of, you know, Henry's cargo. And here's the... There's, yeah, on the on the bright side, though, I mean, yes, not, well, cheap, I, I really do like the illustrations in the book. Like, really, I do. Like, they, they do bring me so much nostalgia, you know, to the scenery of the island of Sodor and such. And, you know, and just, hell, it's even, you know, you know, sorry, it's even, you know, children's books like these and, you know, my childhood nostalgia and such. That even inspire me in being a graphic designer slash artist. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cute. 
So yeah, I really do like the illustrations, though. They're really just so fun to look at. And even in the other books... Well, okay, maybe this one. Um, yeah, in fact, I think they say the year that this... I almost forgot. They say the year this one... Oh! This was in 2000. The same year when Tragic Fail Road came out. So, yeah. <laughs> Here's the rest of the pictures. Um, did I skip one with James and the... What is the Flying Kipper? <laughs> no, it's not really. Yeah, here it is. Helicopter. Uh, you do know that's Harold, right? Alright, here's Thomas. Here's Toby and Birdie. Here's the next one with Gordon on the turntable. And here's this one where now the words are basically just the engine's names. Thomas, James, Henry, Percy, and Gordon. Yeah, um... Yeah, and it's not just, you know, the other books besides Bernstein Bears or Sesame Street and Thomas. Yeah, he, other ones, if I could find them. Ah, oh, damn, the shadow. Oh, yeah, they had Dragon Tales, that, you know, children's show on PBS. They even have some Bible-based stories and even stories about animals. Heck, they even had Theater Tugboat, yeah. I mean, as obscure as Theater Tugboat was, even they had picture books. I mean, I even remember. I even bought some. I don't know if I had... I, I, I'm i pretty sure I sold them. All right, here's the next book. This one is Monster Under the Shed, and it was back in 2001. Yeah, 2001. So, yes, it's basically a Halloween spooky-ish kind of book. I remember, like, I think some of these adaptations, you know, like some of the users... Oh, excuse me. Had adapted this, and... In fact, I remember Bram Grove Films, he adapted Monster in the Shed once, I remember, back in 2012, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, I like the illustrations, though Gordon's funnel looks pretty tall, despite the fact that he's supposed to be the biggest of the group, and also meaning he's got a really short funnel. So, yeah. And here's James, just, it's basically just, you know, the idea behind this book James pretty much, you know, being his, you know, usual douchey self, and, oh, would you look at that, even he's got gray wheels and a red, you know, stripe under his smoke box, like, you know, his early promo pictures, and, of course, the Bachman model. What a surprise. So, yeah, it's just James telling the en the other engines, and by other en engines, as you already saw, Thomas, Percy, Gordon, and Henry, just a story about a little blue engine who is, you know killed by a monster. And check out this little blue engine. Um, I have really no idea what kind of class of engine this is. Yeah, in fact, I don't think it's it even on all a real class. Just like with Lady, a fictional class. Yeah. Um, oh boy. Yeah. The charm of Thomas was, you know, the fact that the engines, well, were, of course, you know, real classes. And this little blue engine you see here he doesn't seem to be based off of any class of engine. Or at least I don't think. I'm going to look it up. Alright, I'm back. I'm actually checking the Thomas Wiki. Yeah, I looked it up on their article, and it says that this lost engine that you see here in the book is a... Uh, I don't know what the full logo is, but it's the LSWR0298BD. Yeah... I haven't really seen one before. But yes, that's what it is. And it's basically just, you know, the whole James is being an asshole to Percy and such. Like, and I like how Henry's, you know, just also sympathetic too. Just showing that he doesn't have to be an asshole. You know, unlike Gordon and James. And it's a shame that Edward's not in the book, because he could also be the sensible one. But I also like how... They play Henry up as a sensible guy, too. And this is definitely not Tid Sheds, that's for sure. So, yeah, like, while James, you know, after James, you know, embarrasses Percy, and Henry telling him, like, sometimes good imaginations think bad thoughts, now it's Thomas's turn to believe that there may be a monster going on. And it's actually pretty impressive on... The illustrations and such, and imagery that we get. So, yeah. <laughs> like, it's pretty typical to have, you know, like, children's books. I almost forgot to mention 
to have like children's books like these, you know, based off of a television series. And despite, you know, the railway series, I don't mind them. In fact, I like them. Because keep in mind, guys, I was I was a child when I read these books, and I and I in fact I'm surprised that the nostalgia still sticks with me. So yeah, Thomas believes there's a monster, but in the end, it's really just a hedgehog, yeah. As you can see here. Well, hey, at least it's not Sonic. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a pretty good book. So, yeah, here's another one. Um, yeah, and also to 1995 Express, and I don't mean to rant on him. Like, yeah, so, so, like, they don't sell the Railway Series. Big deal. I don't mean to be rude to you, but, like, do you think everything should be related to the Railway Series? Uh, look, I don't mean to be rude to the guy. Like, I'm pretty sure he's a very nice guy, but at the same time, it's just that... Uh... Yeah, I just feel like he can be too much of a perfectionist and obsessive compulsive, but I don't mean to be rude to him, because I'm like that too. Alright, so, yeah, it's just this book, um, Special Delivery, which I see it published in 2002, it's basically just, you know, an ongoing, like, story with, you know, different engines trying to deliver a special, urgent, yeah, urgent, you'll be surprised at what's in the package, like, it's basically just the engines, you know, trying to deliver a certain package to the Fat Controller. First, it starts off with Gordon, you know, being as pompous and arrogant as usual, and after Gordon, it comes to Toby... Yeah. The illustrations are still nice, even though the, the colors are pretty obviously bright. Then it cuts to Percy. And it cuts to James with two troublesome trucks. No brake van, though. Here's James. Yeah, of course, he even he's delayed. Of course, thanks to a broken track. And who else would it be besides Harold, though... I really think that one of the flaws with this book now that I realize it should have been like another set of track and Thomas hoping to deliver the thing instead of because he's the one who wanted to, you know, do it. And it says Thomas had been faster than Gordon after all, which is, oh, excuse that. That's the stupid dog in my neighborhood, which is pretty inaccurate because, you know, Gordon is obviously a lot faster than Thomas and, oh, God, shut up, you stupid dog. Yeah, why am I doing... Why is it when I do these videos, I'm always getting interruptions? Alright. I'll just have to do it with the dog barking anyway. So yeah, here's the fat controller with a torn hat. And yes, this is what his package just so happens to be. A brand new hat. Yes. For tonight's big party. We never got to see that. And I want you to bring it. Um, yeah. It should have been Thomas bringing it. Uh, yeah, the story's pretty weak, but hey, it's at least a good read for the kids, I guess. Alright, here's the next one, which was based around the time of Season 6 when it was out. And, let me see, where's the date? Uh, you know what? I'll look at it here. Uh, oh yeah, here it is. 2003. Yeah, Season 6 did come out in 2002, but it came out in 2003 in the United States, so yeah, things are different. Um, so yeah, here's Thomas at the... Yeah, in fact, like, it has gotten adaptations, and if I can recall correctly, the German of Sodor, like, he's done an adaptation of this, I remember. I, I, I watched it, and I think he did a good job, and surprising with Robin Smith narrating. So yeah, here we do... I'm uh, sorry, here we have it. It's just, it's just the, you know, Thomas, you know, with the usual, I want to do something because, you know, I want to prove myself that I'm a really useful engine, yada, yada, yada. And here's these aquarium cars. Yeah, you guys remember the wooden railway selling these aquarium cars? Well, all right, you know what? We'll get to this later. I don't want to waste any time. We have like 29 minutes, yeah.